So just continuing from uh, where we left the last fragment, when you have now in the last fragment, we discussed that X is let's say distributed normally with some value mean of 100 and variance as 50. Now we used a standard normal variable, like a Z is normally distributed with a mean of zero and sigma is one or variance as one. Now the, the in short, when I talk about the X and Z, now it's simple logic. Now, for example, this is the bell curve, which I have for X and here mean is mean is mu and like, which is hundred at this stage. Now, what I just wanted to uh, compare here is both the values is the Z curve will always have mean as zero. Now, every one X value is gonna have uh, a fixed Z value. So let's say if X is 120, or uh, let's say 90 here, I'm gonna have some Z value here. And that Z will be calculated by X minus mean or Sigma. So, so every X value have a Z value. So that's where, that's where this fragment is all about understanding how we use that particular concept to achieve something very, very important. Now, uh, I can use either X variable or Z variable to calculate the probabilities like I did out here uh, in the last question. Now I'm gonna take some more challenging examples like where, where do you think if I can, I can use the X variable directly on my calculator, why do I need Z value, okay? Now I'll take a small example. Now consider that. In a, uh, in a historical aspect. I have, let's say a sample of stone that I, I really don't know the average for that age. And, but I know that it's like, okay, so the deviation might be somewhere 100 years, okay? That if I calculate that the age of the stone, let's say X represent the age of the stone, which I don't know what is the average age of that, that rock. But I know that I, I can, I'm close to 100, um, uh, like uh, the, the variance of the data is 100 square and I'm close to plus minus 100 uh, on the accuracy of standard deviation. Now, basically what I do is like, I, I create a chance, okay, that, okay, I'll say that I'm confident that this rock is older than, let's say, um, maybe uh, 1,500 years, or let's say I'm going to create, let's say 150 year sample here. I'm confident that this rock is basically more than 150 year old. Uh, the probability is I'm close to 80% uh, confident. So I have the probability here. I have some, my, this is my hypothesis basically I'm creating in my mind. Uh, so how, how does this help me? How does that standard normal help me? So first thing is that when I, when I look at this situation more closely, what we have is we don't have the average itself. So I don't know where is this value? What is this value? Okay, but I know that if I, if I shade the area for X more than 150, it's coming pointy. So if I look at, this is my right tail and this is, this is called left tail. So when you have the, uh, more than value, X more than values uh, and the area has been given. So you start shading from right and obviously this area is 0.5. So I have to cross the, uh, this side. So when I look at um, here, it is your, here is 150 basically. So here is somewhere 150 and this area has been given to you as 0.8. Now, how can this calculation that we did on Z value, which is uh, X minus mean or Sigma, uh, can help us do the, do the uh, uh, estimation of the age of the rock, average age of the rock. So uh, as I said in, in the uh, previous fragment that every X value have a Z value. So I'm gonna create, okay, let's say mean is zero for this. Uh, for uh, this thing, I'm gonna create a Z value for uh, this 150. So that's where now my skills are coming in place that, okay, I'm gonna use technology as well as the, the manual calculation methods to get the age of the average age of the rock. So now here is, here is the um, procedure. So first I'm gonna do one thing is, I'm gonna show right from beginning, you are gonna enter into statistics uh, option go under distribution, go under normal. Now uh, you're gonna select the inverse normal option, sorry, inverse normal. So you use this is for uh, pro calculating probability. And this one is when the probability is given and you want to find out some of the missing X value, missing Z value and so on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that part. So 
uh, here what I'm creating is I'm, I'm just simply uh, taking the inverse normal. So when I take inverse normal, I enter into this option. Data is the variable. Sometimes it is in list, so you're gonna, you're gonna get this option. So please make sure your data is on variable mode. Now uh, put tail as uh, this is the left tail area and this is the right tail. So we, we have right tail area here. So tail is right here. So if I take right area, uh, right tail, and I, I, I'm gonna put area as 0 0.8, and mean as uh, one, say mean sigma as one and mean as zero. The reason that I'm putting here is that now, this is a situation where I can't directly put the mean because I don't know the mean value. So I'm gonna put this value and this is nothing but my Z value for this 150. So my Z value for 150 is minus 0.8416212. And this I know is X minus mean over sigma so if I can substitute, I can, I can just take, let's say minus 0 0.8416212 is X is 150 minus mean is basically uh, 100. Mean, I don't know. Let's say mean, I don't know. And Sigma is uh, 100. So I can find out what's my, my mean value. So when I calculate mean here, so it's gonna be, if I multiply it out here, so it's gonna be somewhere negative 84.16212 equals to 150 minus mean. Now, when I bring it this out here, so mean is gonna be somewhere uh, 150 plus uh, 84.164. So this is, the, this is the value or this is the average age of the rock. So this is one example how, how this Z calculation can be so helpful for us in any real life applications. Now, I'm gonna just take uh, one more example and uh, that, that further makes the situation clear to us. How do we use the Z distribution for, for estimation of the probabilities? So I'm gonna take one more example on how do we use the standardized variables to find out some of the missing quantities. One of the favorite question that has been assessed at least three to four times in IB is, um, you have been given, let's say X is, uh, X is distributed, let's say normally uh, with mean of, mean and sigma square here. So the, I haven't given both the quantities. Let's say X is representing the, the speed of a car, speed of a car. Now, when like noticed by police, uh, they find that the car driver is basically driving the car at more than 150 uh, speed, uh, the probability is 0.15. So this is the observation that the police has. And the minimum speed that the driver has is basically, let's say, probability of X being less than 60 is, is 0.4. Um, now using this data, using, this, uh, using the values that I have, I am calculating at what average speed is this driver driving and what is the deviation in his speed. So this is something, uh, one more example. So this is, let me just make it very clear. The situation is about uh, whether the driver is over speeding. Okay, whether the driver is over speeding. So a uh, police car reported the situation. So this, they noticed that the driver drives at more than 150 uh, at uh, the chance of that is 0.15. And probability that his, his uh, lowest speed is, X is less than 60 is 0.4. So um, what we have to do is as a statistician, what we have to wish is that at what average speed is this driver driving? Okay, so that's what is the calculation that needs to be done. So I'm just creating the situation here. So the first thing that I, I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bell curve for us. Okay, so the, the bell curve is really important here. So I'm going to make a bell curve and um, record this data, which is on here. So here, uh, the average, I have no idea. Mean is no idea. I have a probability of X more than 150 is 0.15. So if I've, it's, it's more than area. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill it from the right-hand side. So, so this, I have to fill it from this side because it's more than area. So 0.15 somewhere here. So this area is 0.15. Okay, so 0.15 is this area and the X value that I have is 150. Now, similarly, they say that probability of X less than 60 is 0.4. So less than area as you fill from here. So I have to cover 0.4, so somewhere here it's gonna be uh, 60. So this particular area that has been given to us is 0.4. So when you talk about the 
um, now the strategy or approach, uh, we are going to use the same approach. So we're going to find out the, the Z values for these two X's. So, so create a clone, create a clone for these X values. So if I, if I show here, let's say my, assume that my mean is zero, I'm going to find out a Z value for this 150. I'm going to find a Z value for this, this 60. Uh, and, and then make, make use of those two equations. Let's say this is Z1, this is Z2. And I'm going to make use of, make use of these two equations to find my uh, average speed and the deviation of the speed. So uh, first thing is that what do we do is in order to find the Z value. So I'm going to take, uh, go back and once again, distribution, normal, inverse normal. Now I'm going to first calculate Z value for 150. So I'm creating a clone for 150 using calculator. My tail is right here. So tail is right. Uh, put the area as uh, 0 0.15. This is 0 0.15. And uh, sigma one means zero because that's, that's what is the beauty of the Z distribution that you don't need to change mean and sigma. So what I get is that Z value for uh, this particular uh, distribution here is coming as 1.0364. Now, when I have the, the other Z value calculation, I'm just gonna exit um, and, and just change a little bit. Tail becomes now left. And my area that has been given to me is 0 0.4, sigma as one and mean as zero. So sigma is one, mean as zero. So I get um, the value as, a value for Z value for this is negative 0 0.253371. So these are the two Z values I have got. Now, since I have the formula, uh, Z is X minus mean time over Sigma. I'm gonna plug the Z value uh, for this one. So let's say I'm plugging my first equation is here. So Z one, I'm gonna get negative 0 0.2533. Uh, seven one equals to x x is I'm going to put 60 here because x value I know mean I don't know and sigma I don't know so I'm going to get my first simultaneous equation as mean uh, plus 0 0.253371 sigma uh, uh, if I bring it here equals to um, 60 here it's minus if I convert to normal simultaneous equations. So this is my first equation. Now my second equation, I'm gonna get through plugging in the, the second value uh, of the Z. So my Z second value is 1.03064 equals to 150 minus mean over sigma. And now if I calculate the second equation is mean uh, plus a 1.0364 equals to 150, the sigma times 150 equals to 150. So now you got two simultaneous equation, equation one, equation two. I'm gonna put this on calculator and get the value of mean and sigma. So I'm just gonna go under equation and substitute here. So let's say simultaneous, two unknowns. I'm putting the value. So one, uh, 1.0364 and 150. And second equation is one, uh, negative 0 0.253371 um, um, then the other right hand side is 60. So now when I solve this, I'm getting that the average speed that the driver is driving is 77 and the, the deviation in speed is 66, 69. So, so my mean that I got is uh, 77.68 and uh, sigma that I got is 69.779. So here, here is the logical way of developing the conclusion that, okay, this driver is driving at an average speed of 77, which is high, and the deviation on the speed is this. So it means that he's, he's, he looks like a defaulter because there is a lot of deviation in the speed. So these are some of the strategic uh, ways of developing the normal distribution application into real life context.